Alright everyone, welcome back to Planet Zoo. We are back with episode 14 of Project Covia, building up the final habitat within the Petrified Plateaus, which as I believe I've mentioned before is the Western Lowland Gorilla and the Western Chimpanzee. Now as of recording this voiceover, I haven't added in the chimpanzees, but I do know the gorillas are really quite happy with the habitat. What I'm probably going to do is add the chimpanzees in the next episode with you guys at the end of the video when we do the tour, because of course it's the last episode we're going to be doing before our expedition to the beautiful lands of Subnautica or Ocean as I guess the case may be. So just to make sure you guys understand what's going to be happening, we did put an announcement out in our Discord, so if you want to go do that I would very much recommend it, so you know the kind of timetable of the channel over the next coming weeks. But in regards to Covia and Subnautica, we're going to have this episode of course, episode 14 you're watching right now, coming out on Thursday as per usual, then we're going to have episode 15 next week in which we're pretty much going to be finishing up the entire Petrified Plateaus, it's just going to be a lot of random tasks that I've yet to do. And then the week after that we are commencing Subnautica, which which are going to be uploaded on Tuesdays instead of Thursdays and then I believe Hattie's starting a new series that's coming out on Saturdays if I'm not mistaken. So our new kind of temporary schedule is actually a fortnightly schedule, so we're going to be having a Subnautica video every two weeks, we're going to be having one of the Hattie series every two weeks, and we're going to have group gaming every two weeks, and then we're going to have Mystical Skyblock every two weeks. It's a whole weird thing, but if you want a proper condensed view on what the schedule is actually going to be, genuinely join the Discord, it is the only thing you need to do. Join the Discord or follow the Twitter, that is where you'll get all the information that you could possibly want. And if you are still confused, feel free to ask me in the comments. It's okay, I have no problem with that at all. Anyways, I feel like I always rant about stuff that we're not actually doing in the video, so I should probably talk about this gorilla and chimpanzee habitat. Going into this build, I really had no good ideas. For the safari, I knew I just wanted some huge open area with a river going through it. For the orangutans, I knew that I wanted a big ass ruin, which ended up being the sundial and whatnot. Then for the Bengal tigers, I wanted ruins spread around like a, a little village or whatever and then for the bonobos i wanted to go in through the canyons but for this i simply had no idea but i had this kind of big pocket of water to work with and i really couldn't rip that up i would have liked to change the shape of it slightly but if i ripped that up i'd have to remove tons of barriers and that'd affect the river all the way up through the uh safari habitat sorry i forgot the word there so I had no idea what I actually wanted to do for this habitat, but I'm really happy with it. And to be honest, it might be one of my favorites in this entire region, if not my favorite. I mean, it's definitely the most unique, that's for sure. So I ended up adding loads of kind of big rock piles in the kind of, I don't even know what you would call it. It's like a big bulge in the river, regardless. I'm not sure if it makes any sense, this build geographically at least, but you can argue that they would maybe move some boulders in so the, the gorillas and chimpanzees had stuff to actually walk on rather than swim because of course, as most of the primates in this game seem to not be able to do, they can't swim, uh, which I, I really feel like that doesn't make sense. Surely a chimpanzee can swim. Maybe I'm just being stupid, but hey, I, I'm not complaining. It makes it a lot easier to contain them. So I ended up adding a ton of like rock piles with wooden climbing platforms. Of course, there's certain items in this game that animals can climb on, and then there's certain ones that they can't that are kind of, you know, they'd be too flat to feasibly climb up. There's a selection of nature items like a, a certain few trees like tamarinds, I believe most uh, primates can climb on top of. And then there's these little ones in the habitat section, these, you know, these wooden pieces that look more man-made, of course. I really thought I'd struggle to make these wooden climbing platforms look unique from one another because there's a lot of rocks and I've put them on every single one of them. And the wooden pieces can only come in the singular logs, the thin ones and the thick ones, and then rectangles and squares of different sizes. So you can imagine that gets pretty old pretty quick, but I think I actually managed to keep it interesting to look at. And I must say, I looked back at the Bonobo habitat and all the climbing structures that I built in there. It's such a small thing and you wouldn't even expect it to be possible. But I really think I've gotten better at just building these platforms because I've built so many of them throughout the plateaus. So I think that by the end of the time lapse, these platforms look genuinely like structurally sound, like they could actually hold a gorilla, which I think, I feel like the Bonobo ones just looks so, so flimsy and weak. I might go over that in the next episode, actually, now that I'm saying it out loud, I really should do that. The ones that are attached to the ruins, like the Borny and Orangutans and the Bengal Tigers, I don't think those need to be gone over because it makes sense, you know, they're stood up on stone, you wouldn't need to nail them in like that. Uh, I also think that the game has had a bit of an update recently, I think I managed to fix it, but a ton of the animals got stuck. 
Like, you guys saw with the warthogs and the giraffe in the safari episodes, they got stuck in the bushes and stuck on that tree, and then the bonnie orangutans got stuck between two trees, and then the tigers got stuck behind the ruins, and then the bonobos got stuck on the wall. I don't know what happened, but I feel like the pathing just got changed in Planet Zoo recently, and it's so, so annoying. It's been such a pain to fix. I genuinely think I've spent like an hour just trying to fix the animals, just trying to fix the exhibit so they can actually walk around in it properly. And it's, I, I feel like there's no reason to change that. Maybe there hasn't, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm ranting. Maybe I should shut my mouth. You know what? That's what I think I'm gonna do. I really, it's just, it's so annoying. Anyway, the important thing to note is that it's all working now and we shouldn't have any problems in the future. Now, I'm going to leave you guys with the time lapse for just a couple minutes, but I will pop in before the end of it, before the tour, because there's a couple things I want to talk about that we do later. But for now, enjoy the music, and I will come back in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. So as you guys have seen, I finished up all the climbing platforms and I've added some reeds and some lily pads, which we haven't really got anywhere else in the plateaus, which is really nice in my opinion. One of the things I wasn't as sure on because we've done it all throughout the rest of the rivers in the plateaus is add rapids in the rocks that are in the river. And I've put them in here as well, but I've also put lily pads and stuff like that around the rocks. And I feel like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have the rapid areas right where the lily pads are, because it would, you know, kind of brush them away out of the out of the area. 
So I'd love to see if you guys have any opinions on what I should do with those lily pads. Should I keep them or is it just a bit too unrealistic for you guys? I'd love to see what you guys think. If you do have any opinions on it, feel free to leave them in the comments as always, of course. And the last thing I wanted to talk about before we go into the real-time tour was this kind of ruinous wall that we've got, which is pushing back the land from falling over into the habitat itself. The main reason I did this is because, of course, I needed to enclose the gorillas and um, chimps. I was going to call them orangutans, they are chimps. And I thought that was simply a more creative way of doing it rather than adding some brick or wooden wall or possibly just making a ton of rocks that they can't climb over, maybe another river or something like that. I just think it was a better option and I've wanted to do something like this around the plateau since the start and this was the last opportunity that I'd really have to use it so I figured why not take the opportunity as a bit of character to the habitat and you know it doesn't look bad I definitely don't think it looks bad but we've got a few seconds left of the time lapse so I'm going to see you guys in a real time tour in just a few seconds. And here we are in real time, looking right over the western lowland gorilla and western chimpanzee habitat. I tell you what, those names have been such a pain to say while I'm doing the voiceovers, I'm constantly tripping over my words. It's been very irritating to do, but hey, I've got through it, we're here now. So if I just pop out of here, click on this guy, go on to the habitat thing, it actually only shows these, and then these are all green lit, so it can walk across these, and then it will count only this area as its habitat once it's on this, this little area surrounded by water. And when they do that, they get really upset, because of course it counts it as not having enough space, you know, this is definitely not big enough for four gorillas. Also, if you haven't noticed, this area is all the gorilla habitat excuse, that area that isn't done with the wooden fence yet. We'll be doing that in the next episode, but if you haven't noticed, this area right here on this side of the river, that is for the gorillas and chimpanzees, but this is already in the bonobo habitat, so I've been hearing them play the piano the entire time I've been building. You little jerk. Who is this? Amina? Let's, let's find Soup. There he is! Hey! Hello, Soup. How's it going? But yeah, I actually really like the way it lines right up against the bonobo habitat, so it kind of looks like all three of these chimp-type animals are all interconnected and living somewhat together. And as I mentioned in the time lapse, we've got these rapids, but I feel like the way they push into these lily pads just doesn't feel right to me, so maybe I'll move the lily pads uh, to the more open areas of the water. In fact, that probably makes more sense, generally speaking. But you can see after the time lapse, I added a ton of little um, enrichment items. So we've got a little log type deal there. I don't even know what that's called. We've got a little mirror thing. We've got another one of those mirror things over here. I believe this is some kind of rolling feeding station or whatever. Uh, we've got a football over here, a cardboard box up on this one, and another one down here. So yeah, all in all, I think it looks great. I think this is actually a really nice kind of unique exhibit for the zoo because the rest of them have really been quite open and just naturalistic, or at least naturally in regards to history. So people would have lived there, built up the ruins, and they've naturally decayed, whatever. It looks natural still, you know what I mean? But this one feels like the keepers of uh, Project Covia, the zoo, whatever, would have actually had something to do with it, which, you know, I don't mind, actually. And if you didn't see on the time lapse, we built up this little uh, shelter type deal, and we've actually got bedding underneath that, so they can sleep in those areas. So yeah, I believe that is about it for the gorilla habitat. Of course, we're going to be adding the chimpanzees in the next episode and finishing up that area by the fence and all the other stuff around the petrified plateau, so that should be pretty interesting. I also want to show you the staff area in the Ruby Basin that we did last stream. We're going to be continuing it this Sunday as well, so if you want to tune into that, feel free. Of course, it's very far from done, but I actually really like the way the paths have worked out, and we've got these, like, this is a quarantine and a veterinary building. These are just two staff rooms, and then we've got a food prep thing here. On the side of food prep, we've also got an animal trade center and a workshop, which aren't really as necessary for this part of the zoo, but I felt like including them anyway. And as I talked about on stream, with this being a quarantine building, you can put up to, I believe, 18 of any animal in here. And of course, if we had 18 hippos that got sick and needed quarantining, it would make absolutely zero sense for them to be in this tiny little building. So I put a little fenced off area behind here, which of course I'm gonna fill in with some more grass and stuff. I'm gonna make it look much more pretty than this. 
but I believe it just adds a little bit of realism and kind of takes away from the boredom of these staff areas. And we've also got a little courtyard here in which I'm going to put tons of boxes, fruits, maybe a couple jeeps or whatever. But that stuff is all for another day. We also need to work on the staff room for the Petrified Plateaus, but that is going to be happening in stream. Of course, as you guys know, we're going to be going over to Subnautica for a while. Whilst we're doing Subnautica, I'm going to continue the live streams every Sunday, or they might actually change day, but either way, I'm going to be continuing the live streams. So by the time we come back for Kovia Season 2, if you will, the whole revamp thing, we're going to have the entire Ruby Basin fleshed out. We are going to have the entire Petrified Plateaus finished. And generally, it should just be great to move on to these new projects, which I'm extremely excited for. I also didn't really mention how this collides with the Safari Habitat. The river goes straight through both of these. But it's covered by tons of reeds, rocks, trees and stuff like that. So none of the animals from the safari can get into here. And none of the animals from in here can get into the safari. Which is great. Of course we don't want them mingling like that. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy of course hit that like button. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Thank you Gorilla for taking a shit right in the middle of my outro. You are disgusting. I'm going to go talk to one of your friends. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you want more content. We're getting that little switch up of the channel as I've mentioned earlier. So definitely join the Discord to check out that timetable. Oh my god. You too. Stop pooing. Third time's the charm. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys.